Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about the reintroduction of the blood of Christ into Mass and what are some more convenient ways to, to bring this back given the fear of COVID and other problems. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Sucuturam Principio et Nuc et Semper et Seculae Seculorum. Amen. So I don't know about your particular diocese, but my archdiocese announced that they're, they're bringing back the ability for parishioners to receive the blood of Christ. Um, since COVID, of course, it, you've only been able to receive uh, the body of Christ. But my archdiocese is uh, starting in November going to allow us to receive from both species. Now, your diocese, of course, it could have already happened, or maybe it's never going to happen. I don't know. But I definitely sense that, similar to the peace, I definitely sense that there's going to be people who will not receive the blood of Christ due to fears of COVID or for other, other reasons. And again, I understand that there are some people who don't like to receive Eucharist from the extraordinary ministers, from lay people, in other words. I understand that. So this video is going to kind of be ge generic, but like, first of all, there are Protestant misconceptions about, and now there's even Catholic misconceptions about the Eucharist, how if there's something wrong, if you can't receive the body and the blood of Christ, like somehow the church is depriving people from receiving the blood of Christ because you're only getting half of Jesus. And I think this is certainly understandable if you don't understand the principle of transubstantiation. But this was established way back in the Council of Florence, I think was the first time that it was, it was kind of fully uh, promulgated and then later reiterated in Council of Trent. So Council of Florence was like 13th century, Council of Trent was 16th century. So in short, and again, I'm no master of transubstantiation, but in short, when you receive the body of Christ in the, in the host, you are receiving his blood, his soul, and his divinity. You're receiving all of them. So you don't necessarily need to receive from both species. And really throughout history, the church was a little loath to be offering uh, the blood of Christ to people because, I mean, think how easy it is to spill and other issues like that. But the church, the church founded by Jesus Christ and through its, its protection by the Holy Spirit, decided or has decided of well over several hundred years ago that you, you're receiving all aspects of Christ just by receiving the host. Now, that being said, there are going to be people who do want to receive the blood of Christ. They miss receiving the blood of Christ and they feel like they were deprived and they want to receive both species. And I do think it's great in the church's prudence to bring this back, given that COVID is essentially gone or it's being managed. So I think that's great. And if you are one of those who wants to receive the, blood, the body and blood of Christ, then that's great. Now, if you're one of the people who is worried about receiving the blood of Christ because we are sharing bacteria. I mean, look, I used to be an extraordinary minister. Uh, wiping the, the chalice with a napkin isn't going to be killing the bacteria that's there. But pre-COVID, we didn't really have an issue with it aside from germaphobes, but for some reason, I think a lot of people will be concerned about it now. I would say that the easy way around this worry is intinction. My church, so the Catholic Church has 22 rites, essentially different like, oh, they're not liturgies because I think there's really just seven liturgies and then there's 22 rites or, or traditions. And so in the Eastern rites, like the Maronite, the Byzantine and so forth, along with the ordinary of the Chair of St. Peter, which is my national diocese, we, we do intinction. So intinction, if you're not familiar with that term, is essentially dipping, for lack of a better word, the host into the, the blood of Christ and then administering it. And so you are receiving both species. Now, the issue with intinction that I think the typical maybe Catholic in America would have some issues with is that you have to receive it on the tongue. Uh, I don't know of any of the Eastern rites that do it or certainly at the ordinary uh, We have to receive kneeling and on the tongue. I talked about in that video when I was in Italy how people, how a priest denied me the Eucharist because I was kneeling and wanted to receive it on the tongue. So intinction to me is, is a great compromise because you don't have to worry about the germs of a chalice, and, but you are receiving the blood of Christ, but also the, the priests don't have to worry about spilling the, 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 the chalice as well, but just dipping it and you have to receive on the tongue. So I think it'd be great if 
all parishes and all dioceses really uh, roll this out and just have intinction done everywhere. And I, look, I get it. There's going to be some people, and I'm not going to just you know, blindly call them all modernists, but there are going to be people who have issues with intinction, either because they feel like the lay are not being empowered anymore, because the other thing with intinction is only, only the ordained can administer. So deacons or priests or bishops can only administer the, the, the Eucharist. And so, or I think, I think the chief acolyte, so I think of my, at the ordinary, the chief acolyte can as well. But in other words, the lay can't go up there and then do intinction. So I think there's going to be some people that won't like intinction being implemented in all parishes because it's going to somehow disenfranchise the lay. But the lay have so many ways to be empowered at, and on the parish level or even during mass. You can be a lector, you can be involved in the choir, you can be an usher. So I don't, I don't really think that's a legitimate grievous. Um, the other thing is that some people don't want to receive it on the tongue. Now, now, you know, growing up as a child, I went to the typical Novus Ordo Mass, and I did not receive by the tongue. And so, the, the, I think growing up, part of me was just kind of like, I don't want to stick out my tongue and all that. But I've been receiving by the tongue for years now. But I understand that there's maybe a apprehension about receiving on the tongue, either because you just are not used to it or not comfortable with it. So everyone would have to receive it on the tongue. And so I think some people... Uh, would not like that. But I think the main reason why, let's say, a bishop would not roll out intinction and make it standard for all parishes is because I think a lot of pastors would not like that. And I think there would be blowback on the parishioner level for a variety of reasons. But I think it's the best way. It's the best of both worlds. It's a best compromise in this situation. Because look, if, if you don't feel the need to receive the blood of Christ in Mass, like me even before COVID, it's not really a big deal. But there, there is a certain element of Catholics and certain Protestants who will say, I want to join the Catholic Church because in my Lutheran church, you know, they pour the blood of Christ into little pixie cups and then you drink pixie cups. But you, you might get some Protestants who are like, I want to join the Catholic Church because of this. And you're depriving me of the blood of Christ. And there's going to be some Catholics as well who feel this way, like, like you're not getting all of Jesus because you're not receiving the blood and the body of Christ. And again, this goes back to poor catechesis, and this is just poor poor education of Catholics and Christians alike. And this was decided over 700 years ago that we're receiving the body of Christ is you're receiving all four parts of, of Jesus Christ. So in closing, I think intinction would be a great thing, partly because I am a traditionalist and I do have a bias toward receiving on the tongue and intinction, but I think practically and pragmatically speaking having every parish do intinction is is a good thing and i think it would also bring back a certain amount of solemnity and a certain amount of respect to the eucharist and we've talked about this before how close to 70 percent of catholics don't even believe in the real presence and i think that's partly because of the way we carry the mass we conduct the mass so if you made it where everyone had to kneel and you had to receive it on the tongue or even just receiving it on the tongue I think to a certain extent it would uh, remedy that problem. So to me, and it could, it could just be a traditionalist bias on my, on my part, but to me it just seems like it's the best of both worlds if we just rolled out intinction um, instead of, of, of having the, 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 the blood of Christ in the chalice and the body of Christ, of course, in the host. For those who are, are apprehensive about receiving the blood of Christ due to germs and due to COVID issues, Guys, post in the comments. I would really like to hear from you if you agree or disagree. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Mm -hmm.